I'm Carrie Fink with the Helping Seniors of Brevard, and it's time for our Helping Seniors update for this week. And uh, if you were around uh, last week and paying attention, you know we had the opportunity to sit down with our president and founder, uh, Joe Steckler, and we got to talk about the car raffle because it's getting close and it's uh, it's very important to uh, keeping the work of helping seniors going. So we thought we would continue that conversation. How are you today, Joe? Well, I'm fine, Kerry, and you know, I, I can always talk about this uh, this car raffle because it means an awful lot to our program. Uh, you know, most nonprofits uh, are dependent on someone else to uh, give them the money to operate and do whatever they have to do. And when we started our program, we decided to do it on a business model. That means we tried to earn our own money to put the program on and hopefully we could get some other programs like grant programs or something else from the government or something that to, to, to sort of bring money to the program that would sort of fund some of the other programs that we wanted to do. Because one of the hardest things nonprofits have to do is raise money to pay their staff. Because nonprofit doesn't mean the people don't have to be paid. Nonprofit simply means we don't have to pay taxes. That's all it means. So that car raffle, this car raffle, and the ones we've done before, and especially the one this year, is really important because we're taking on a new burden. And that burden is a senior resource center. And uh, I'm not going to do all the talking about it. You're the executive director, and I want you to talk about it a little bit too. But, you know, you've been doing this with me for now for 11 years. Yeah. And as, as we've come along, I've seen little pieces being put in place that just keep making us stronger each year. And what makes us stronger are the people that buy the raffle tickets, that make donations, and they, 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 they give us the, uh, the wherewithal to do something. But now we also have sponsors, and those sponsors <laughs> give to us out of the goodness of their heart. And we, we try to promote their business, but it, that's, that's a hit and miss type thing. And they know that, but we do, we do recommend these people, if their service is needed by a caller, we certainly tell them about the people that are our sponsors because that's how the system works. You know, you just, you just, you just can't expect to get everything without giving something in return. Yeah, Joe, I mean, and especially like you mentioned about this uh, Senior Resource Center, I know that's been a vision uh, that we've talked about since you founded the organization back in 2011. And, and we sort of got a, a running start a little bit uh, before COVID, but as, as everybody that is familiar with helping seniors knows, because we were in that assisted living facility it was a great place but when COVID hit you know nobody could go in or out so we were back to square one and then uh thanks to your persistence in 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 talking to all the the really the kind of the powers that be in the in the marketplace and you found a a kindred uh spirit in um Dr. Craig DeLegdish who heads up Omni Healthcare and he he was like I want to help you guys any way I can and so uh, here we are in 2023 with the opportunity of opening the Senior Resource Center. And we were just talking uh, that it looks like we're going to try for our grand opening on September 9th. I mean, we're open now, but I mean, a general public open house kind of thing on Saturday, September 9th, because this is a whole nother chapter in the Helping Seniors story, because it gives us so many good partners in, in the center with us. But even last week, Joe, uh, we had our very first program there. One of our partners, um, Coastal Occupation Therapy, did a falls and balance assessment. And there was like, uh, I don't know, 20 people who came through that afternoon and sat down with a professional occupational therapist. And they were doing all these uh, things that, Joe, I know you, you've done a lot of this, so you understand it. But they were like doing pull and tug things, kind of checking where people were and really doing like a clinical assessment and it's just fascinating because I think that's a, a kind of a, 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 you know, a first step to all the things that are going to be coming out of that center, Joe. Well, I just I was thinking, Carrie, that, you know, I, I've been 
during COVID, I was in a rehab center for four months. So I know what it's like to be shut in. And I know how much that Zoom feature on my on my uh, iPhone meant so I can talk to my wife <laughs> and see her and not just a telephone conversation. She, we were actually talking to each other and we were able to say our prayers together over, a, you know, over an iPhone connection. And that's one of the things that like in this new resource center we're gonna have is one of our uh, uh, really desired programs that we wanna implement is a program that will teach seniors how to turn on and operate a computer, but also how to play around with that iPhone. And when it comes to the iPhone, I'm going to be one of the ones signing up for that class because I I know how to get, I can, somebody teaches me something all the time, but I, I still have a heck of a time with those text messages. I can't, my fingers aren't that nimble at my age. I can't make them work like some of these people do. I watched a little girl is 13, four, well, she'll be 15 next month. We go to breakfast with her on Sunday. And I watch her little fingers fly over that uh, text messaging thing. And I just don't know how she does it. But uh, they do it to kids. The kids can do that stuff in their sleep. Yeah. But, you know, if we teach seniors, they'll do it in their sleep too. You know, sort of, so to speak. But that's the goal, you know, having a place that we can we can build programs and then offer them to people that need them. And the other thing that in the senior center is that we'll have the wherewithal to have a phone helper connect people with with services that they need, uh, information and everything else. And, and we desperately need more than one phone caller. So that's why this car raffle is so important because the car raffle gives us what we call in the fundraising business, unrestricted funds. That means we can use that money wherever we want. Like we've got one program that we're trying to collect from the county from last October. Yeah. You know, it, it, when you when you work with government sources, yes, they've got a lot of money. Yes, they got a lot of money, but they also yes have a lot of requirements, and, and it drives us nuts at times. I know how much time you spent going out to the government center, just trying to collect or get the ability to collect a little bit of what they owe us. Well, there I go again, talking too much. <laughs> Talk about the raffle. Well, the raffle is, as you said, Joe, it's it's for years. This is the seventh annual Helping Seniors Car Raffle. And I often tell people, Joe, I remember you saying you and A.J. Hires go back into the mid-90s when you were uh, raising the money and, and getting those Joe's Clubs and things built. But here we are, seven. seven we've been around 12 years going into 13 on Helping Seniors. But uh, this is the seventh annual car raffle, and it really has become literally over half of the budget that we need. So we really need people to get involved and help us in the fundraising. But the thing, the, the fun part about it is it's a fun way to do it. You get your ticket, uh, one for $25 or five for $100 donation, and then you are registered. You are in the drawing for one of those five cars. You get to pick if you want that Dodge Challenger, you want that uh, Chevrolet Camaro, the Mazda Miata, the Kia Sportage, or even the Mitsubishi Outlander. And then even more fun is each ticket. That's why many people go ahead and say, I'm going to donate the $100 because that gives me five tickets, five chances to win. But then I can also bring four family members or friends with me when we come to the American Muscle Car Museum on Saturday, October 7th, which is the grand drawing night. And that is a whole wonderful evening by itself because Mark opens up that tremendous museum. Uh, he springs for the beer, wine, soda, the all the great snacks. And, and of course, probably the most valuable part of it is he keeps adding to that collection, Joe. They tell me it's over 400 cars now. Now, let me, you know, let me tell you, put something out to our, our viewers that, uh, you know, we talk about five cars, but let's just say some guy in his 30s has always wanted a um, 
Chevrolet, what was that that car that really a seventy eighty thousand dollars sports car? Oh, the Corvette! Wow, Corvette. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's say, let's say somebody won a uh, Camaro or, or just what won any won any one of the cars. He could always take that car, and AJ will give him what the value of that car is on a credit. And if he wanted to apply that toward a Corvette, he could always do that. He might be, he might have to dream for another ten years for he'd have that, that that amount of money to uh, to get a Corvette. But uh, you know, I remember years ago we had a 1957 Corvette with what have it had been called ghost paintings in it, and we had that car up at the Daytona uh, 500. And um, some guy came up to me and he uh, was really pondering hard whether or not he wanted a ticket. So I finally convinced him to buy a ticket. He bought one ticket. He won the car. Wow. One, one ticket. All so you never know what you're going to do. It's like, it's like playing the lottery. And heavens to Betsy, so many of you viewers play that lotto and like on this eight hundred million dollar thing that's going off tomorrow night uh, or Saturday night, uh, you know the chances of winning that are almost nothing. Uh, you know, somebody out out of eight hundred million. Uh, but anyway, somebody's going to win it if they got the ticket. It's like somebody. I bought a couple of tickets on it, and somebody said, "Joe, you don't have a chance." I said, "Well, look at it this way: if I don't have a ticket, I can't win it." But if I have a ticket, I got a chance to win it. And the same way, same thing goes with this car raffle. But the car raffle, folks, it enables us helping seniors to help seniors. And if I if we had the time, I could tell you story upon story why helping seniors is a needed organization and that the information that we get to our callers helps them. And I've listened to calls from people that I felt were one step away from, from doing something drastic. Once they talk to our phone talker, they calm down. And of course, a lot of those people, we refer them to uh, do the emergency services because that's what they need. And we don't try to second guess. We we do what we think is right. But that car raffles on October the 7th, Saturday night, and Mark Pylock over at the Muscle Car Museum is one of the kindest gentlemen you ever want to meet. He's got a beautiful wife, and he's got a son. And of course, Mark is about six foot seven. And he's a big guy, and uh, he's got a son that's going to be a big guy too. Because his wife is no shorty; she's pretty tall too. So uh, it's a wonderful family. They're all nice people, and uh, they want to help seniors, but they also help other charities too that help other people. And that's that's the only way you can get in to see these cars is through a charity event. Yeah, no, that's that is so true. Uh, Mark has been so gracious every year that he's had that museum open and we surely don't take it for granted, but he's been kind enough every year to invite us back since he opened that museum to do the drawing. And Joe, just to your point about uh, people being grateful for helping seniors, this is literally uh, and I am not kidding. This came in 40 literally says 46 minutes ago uh, and it was a um, letter to Nancy uh, from somebody that she helped, Nancy Deardorff, I'm talking about our operations director, and it says, thank you for your return phone call asking for help for my 94-year-old mom who is having visual problems and needs hands in attention getting in and out, out of vehicles with her walker, plus trying to pay her homeowner's insurance, which is scheduled to renew in December. I left voicemails for both organizations you suggested. You have been the only person in Brevard who seems to know about these programs. And 
I've spoken with other agencies that do not know much about these programs. Your information might be the fuel that pulls my mom out of loneliness and fear she is currently experiencing and allows her to enjoy her independence again, sincerely. And so those are the kind of, um, I guess you would call them testimonials, Joe. That's when when you support the work of helping seniors, you're making, you're giving people hope. I mean, you're, you're giving them help, but you're also giving them a, a, a connection to something that might just make that difference, Joe. Yeah, one one quick thing, because we're we're not going to talk much longer, but uh, we do a lot of work with veterans, and uh, we recommended a program called the Veterans Caregivers a Comprehensive Assistance Care Program. It's for the for the caregiver of the vet, and um, I looked on the internet last night, and I saw that they're having a lot of problems. The VA is going to do an investigation because they're finding it's taking four and five months wow. for some of these things to go through. And I started looking at the fine print on this thing, and it's got a, a high disability rating to qualify. And I don't think that was the intention of the program. So I got to call into the VA to find out if they really have looked at their document they're asking people to fill out because uh, the, the program is to help the veteran who has a caregiver and he has to pay for services and it's not based on rank or rate or how old or how young you just got to be a vet and i i think that somebody has made a mistake somewhere along the line if we don't correct it then mm -hmm. more veterans are going to ignore the program and they're going to they're just not going to say anything so that's one of the things we do is we look at the fine print on things. If we're not working, there's got to be a reason why. And if the VA starts looking at it, it could take them five months, six months, a year. And that money's need, money is there to be used. And if we don't use it, it just goes back into that big pot up there in Washington, D.C., and it disappears. And you know the problems we're going through with the budget now. So. Another good reason for helping seniors having having your support. Yeah. So Joe, I'll I'll kind of wrap it up by reminding you how you get those tickets. So there's there's a lot of different ways. Number one, you can always call Nancy on our senior information helpline. I'll give you that number now so you can grab a pencil and jot it down. It's 321, area code 321, and then 473. 7770. Again, 321473 you, you, right. you can get your tickets right there at helping seniors carraffle.com. Safe, secure, online. Get them. Uh, Marty will mail them right out to you. So you'll be set with those. Uh, you can go to any of the Boniface Hires dealerships. Maybe you want to look at these cars up close and personal. Just go there. They've got your tickets there as do most of our business partners. So everybody from folks like uh, Bill Johnson, board certified elder law attorney, he's got them in his office, uh, Dr. Lee Sheldon uh, at Solid Bike Dental and, and Sheldon and Furtado. Uh, they have it right there on Sarno Road. Most of our partners, Joe, have those tickets. But like you said, you got to you gotta have that ticket if you're going to have a chance to win and for sure to come by the, the, the Muscle Car Museum on the night of the drawing. So I'll give you the last word with that, Joe. Yeah, well, the last, last thing I'll let you put, Carrie, you know, there's a, a magazine called Senior Scene Magazine. Yes. And that magazine is in these little containers outside the post offices. And you just reach there and take one, doesn't cost you a cent. A lot of people get it delivered to them in their driveway. Uh, you can pick it up at around 500 locations in Brevard County. And there's a lot of good information in there. And, um, uh, it's uh, I maybe someday it might become equal to that other paper we have, but uh, at least hometown news is a is a, an organization that does hometown news and it reaches out to our local public. So I will thank them. It's a good magazine. I'll pick it up, take a look at it. We got a newsletter in there, folks, and I got a message in there too. So. Uh, Take it, look at, read it, pass it on to somebody else. 
All right. Sounds Thanks, good. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. So get You're your welcome, health. Carrie. <laughs> Thanks. And we'll see you at the American Muscle Car Museum. Make sure you get your tickets and we'll see you okay. next time on Helping Seniors Updates. Bye-bye.